Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial. In this video I am going to show you the important skill of being able to use multiple view controllers. So using one view controller is great, it's awesome, but in most apps you're going to require more view controllers. So in this video I'm going to show you how to set up numerous of view controllers, how to use them and how to um, be able to access variables from all the view controllers. So if that is something you want to know how to do or are interested in learning then just keep watching this video and I will show you exactly how to do it. So let's start by creating a new Xcode project. Just double click right here double tap and we're going to use a single view application so we're not going to make a game we're not going to make a page based application although we basically could but we're going to do it all from scratch so that I can show you all the good stuff so let's create a single view application I'm going to name this uh, multiple views make sure that the language is set to Swift and that none of these are selected then click next and I'm just going to save it on my desktop so before I get started with creating an awesome little app to demonstrate uh, what I'm trying to show here, I'm just going to go over something very quickly here. And that is local versus global variables. So let's say I have a variable called name and it is uh, Sebastian, my name. So right here I have created a variable of type string that contains this variable right here, Sebastian, that is a string. Now this is awesome, this is beautiful, but the problem is that this variable here is only accessible by this view controller, which means this view controller right here, only this view controller right here can access this variable. And that's because it is written within the view controller. So all the data that we stuff within one view controller stays within that view controller. So if I now created a second view controller and I wanted to access my name, I forgot my name, I want to access it, then I wouldn't be able to because it's stuffed and hidden within this view controller right here. Now, if you want to access this variable in different view controllers, we have to make it global. So right now it's local. We, then we have to make it global. So what we simply do is we copy it and we paste it right here. So now it isn't stuffed within the view controller anymore. Now it's outside the view controller. And that means that I will be able to access this variable right here on my second view controller, on a third, on a fourth, on a fifth, and so forth view controller. So it's not now accessible by any view controller that I would make. Now this is the same as uh, the only exception to this rule is of course if you collect data from the internet which you can access from any view controller, if you use core data or if you use user or you store your information in US, uh, user defaults. Then you can access it from anywhere but it now, right now we're just going to stick to normal variables and that means if we want to access it in other view controllers we write it outside the view controller. Now, why don't we write all the variables outside of view controller? That's simply because it takes unnecessary amount of memory to have all the variables accessible at all types. So we try to minimize the amount of global variables and then, then uh, yeah, that's uh, the takeaway message right now. Try to minimize the global variables, but, so, but of course, if you have to access them on other uh, view controllers, then of course, write them as a global variable. So now we're going to try this with a small little app. Um, and I'm going to show you how you set up a second view controller and all that stuff. And remember that you do the exact same procedures uh, on the third, on the fourth, on the fifth view, view controller. So if you know how to create another view controller, you know how to create as many view controllers as you want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out this view controller right here. So not the storyboard, not the navigation, but this one right here. Drag it out, place it side by side, and here you have your second view controller. Now it looks great, but we can't do so much with it. Of course we could um, now, we, we, we can't do much with it. That's pretty much the bottom line here. Imagine it like this being a car. The view controller is a car, but without an engine. 
the engine is this file right here, which gets the view controller to do something. So here you have an empty car, here you have an empty car with an engine, and the engine is, if you click right here, is the view controller. So this file right here, and if you go to this one, it hasn't got a file, which means uh, we can't program it in any way. It doesn't have an engine to do something. This one on the other hand, as stated, has an engine in the form of a view controller that's right here. So this is empty and that's something we want to change if we want to add some code to it or do some useful stuff with it. So what we do is pretty simple. We go to file, new, file, and then you go to iOS because that's what we're making right now and Cocoa Touch Class, click next and then make sure that the subclass is uh, View, UI view controller and name it whatever you want to. I'm going to name it second view controller. Then I'm going to say next and I'm going to save it right here as it suggests together with my other view controller and the app delegate. So just create it. Right now we have an engine uh, right here but we haven't connected it yet. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go to the view controller click on this one right here, the identity inspector, click here and then choose second view controller. Right now we have put an engine in our car, which means we're now able to do some fancy stuff with it. We're now able to write code right here that's going to be executed when our user lands on this one right here. So now we're going to make a simple, simple app, uh, which is going to be a text field. Let's see, ba -ba -ba, right there, and we're going to have a button. And just do exactly as I am doing right now, creating the text field where the user can input something and a button that is the action. So let's make it, um, give it a background color so that we really see that this is a button like that. I like to have the text color to be white. Gives it a nice look in my opinion. So here we go. Here is my text field. I'm just going to set this to iPhone 6s so that when I launch it, it looks great. Here is my interface and what I wanted to do is I want my, I want to write in my name right here. I then want to store it in a global variable and access that variable right here. And then I want to display it in, a, let's see, not in the text field, but in the label. Right here, this is going to display what I wrote in the first view control. So simple enough, but now we're going to use everything we learned to do this. Now my challenge for you is uh, to let you try this. Try it on your own, see how far you get. And uh, if you don't manage it, no problem. But if you manage it, well done. But uh, after this video, you are going to be able to do this on your own. So no problem if you're not able to do it uh, because everything has to be learned, right? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this one. And then we're going to make sure that we have selected the view controller. So the first view controller. If you haven't got that, you can do it right here. Recent files and then view controller. Then we are going to create a global variable, a global variable that is a variable called name and it's going to be empty at first. Then when we click the button, so first we have to import the button as an action, control, drag it, so hold down control and drag it. I'm going to call it action, it's going to be an action, connect it, and then I am also going to import my text field and this time as an outlet. So an outlet basically means that we can extract information from it or give information to it. An action means that it does something. So we are basically now with this function right here, place the listener on the button that says, hey, I was pressed and runs this code every time someone clicks on the button. The only reason we imported the text field also is so that we are able to edit the text field and do something with it. So what we're now going to say is we're going to say name is equal to 
outlet.text exclamation mark. And that simply means that we are sure that there is some text there. Now, what I would encourage you to do is I would write a little quick if statement to check if outlet.text is not equal to nil, then we are going to do this. Because if we do this and the user hasn't inputted anything, the app is going to crash. So we're going to check if the user has inputted something. And if he has, we're going to update the name uh, variable. So now we have updated this variable and now we're going to display it in the second view control. So click on this one, recent files, second view controller, and we're going to head over here and we are going to drag in our label. So control drag and release, then make it an outlet and call it a label. This is so that we can also change the properties of this label right here. So we're going to say label and it wouldn't work or it, pro it probably would, <laughs> but uh, we're going to do some more fancy stuff. We're going to write it within the view did load method so that when the view loads, we are going to update the label. Or I'm just going to show you one more. Um, that I would use instead of so that you have it in your uh, so that you know how to use it and it's called view did appear. So this one is probably one of the functions that I use the most in each view controller and that is because each time the view has appeared that is when this code here is run. So instead of using this one that might not work because the view hasn't fully loaded yet, which means we can't access this one. Here we know that the whole view has loaded and we're able to change aspects of the view. So here we're going to say label.text is equal to name. As you see, it appears here because it's a global variable. No error whatsoever because it is, as I said, a global variable. Now what we can do to be extra fancy here, just to bring it up a notch, that is to when we have click submit, that we go over to this label right here. So what I would like you to do is again, recent files, view controller, and then when we do this, click on submit button, hold down control, drag it over to the view controller and release. Click on show, then click on this segue right here, click here, and then give that segue a name. So I'm going to call it segue. So now we will be able to call this segue when our user clicks on the submit button. So we're now going to say perform segue with identifier, um, let's see, segue and the sender is self. So now each time our user clicks on the submit button, it's also going to perform this segue right here and this label is going to update. So let's try to run this application and if everything works for you, you have just learned the difference between a local and a global variable, how to create a second view controller and install an engine on that view controller and then also update it with the global variable. So that's a huge step. If you didn't know this before watching this video, you just take a huge, humongous step in your development journey because this is something you will use all the time. So let's try to run the app and see what we've got. Okay, so here's our app. Let's uh, type in my name, Sebastian. I click on submit, bam, and we jump over and the label updates itself. Now, this is awesome. This is everything we went through combined into one app. And of course, you could also have a button here that goes back. And just to show you how to do that very, very easily, I'm going to see, copy this button, paste it in here. Come on, you can do this. And paste it in here, there we go. I'm going to name it back. And the easiest way to perform a segue is click on it control, drag it over and just click show. Now this will work uh, just by clicking on the button 
it will perform the segue. We don't need to do anything in the code. It will just perform the segue. We just can't call it because uh, in the code because we haven't given it an identifier. So let's say my name is Carl, submit, bam, Carl, I can go back. I can write um, Peter, submit, bam, Peter, there we go. That's all there is to multiple view controls. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the subscribe button. And if you do so, I will see you in my next video, which I'm definitely looking forward to. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.